right, it's time for the first check-in of the month, one of my Friday reads where I talk about what I read, what I'm reading, what I hope to get to next. And I'm filming this one fairly early. Um, I think I'm like seven days into the month when I'm filming this, but you're seeing it almost like a week after because of scheduling and a trip I have coming up. And I still wanted to talk about these books and they'll be like my initial thoughts because I haven't finished anything yet this month, but I'm in the middle of a lot of great things. So come the next weekly check-in, you'll get more of my fleshed out thoughts and more things that I ended up reading on my trip and stuff like that. So first off, um, we'll just get some of the easier things out of the way. I did continue Gardens of the Moon. Like I said, I was going to. I read the first two books. The Gardens of the Moon is one of the few that has many, many books. The other ones always tend to have like four and they're really long. This one, they tend to be chunked a little more and I kind of like that. <laughs> Um, rereading Gardens of the Moon just really reminds me how the rest of the series is not like Gardens of the Moon and it makes me sad because Gardens of the Moon is so fun and full of promise and some of it's realized promise and some of it's like we really never talk about that again and like maybe there's a mention of it later but if you remember from my discussions of Wheel of Time if you ever watched my Should You Read for Wheel of Time I don't really love when a thing is brought up in the first book and we don't talk about it till like the last book not my favorite thing. I really don't like on the alternative side, something that's brought up in the last book that we have never foreshadowed before. Looking at you, Harry Potter 7. <laughs> I, you know, there are a lot of things we can discuss with a lot of nuance about the Harry Potter series, but like, I don't think we talk enough about how not good that last book is. Cause I really, I read that in high school, didn't like it. And I never reread the series after that because I really didn't like it that much. And I kept telling myself I liked it. But like, I used to religiously reread that series. It's my least watched of the movies. Like I just, anyways, and it falls into that thing. So Garns of the Moon, very fun. Um, I'm also listening to the big books podcast, 10 very big books podcasts. Um, as I'm like reading the sections I get to, which has made it a fun little project for me. I don't do it every day. I definitely have kind of noticed with my weeks because I teach Monday through Wednesdays. And then Thursdays and Fridays are prepping and grading, but it's a little less I'm on, if that makes sense, especially Wednesdays. I have to figure out how to like turn off on Wednesdays because Wednesdays I'm on from like 8.30 to five. And when I get home, I'm like, you can slow down now. You've done everything. And it's like, my body won't slow down, which makes it really hard to read. I don't know if that happens to other people. So I mainly get audiobooks done on those days and maybe a little bit some reading at night, but in general, I'm it's stare at the wall, relax time. So Thursdays and Fridays and the weekends have been my major reading days. So it's been interesting, especially when I have physical books I'm reading. Um, Gardens of Moon has actually become my, I don't know if anyone else does this, because I like to immerse and read it. So I'll have my Kindle with the book and I'll have my AirPods in and I'll just walk around my neighborhood reading it. I love reading books while I'm walking. I'm like really good at it. I used to do it as a kid at the store. Um, like mom would go to Home Depot and I'd bring like, I think vividly, I remember reading Wicked. I was reading Wicked next to the cart and my mom would just be like, how can you follow me? It's like, I would just use my peripherals to like keep her cart in my sights and I would just make sure I didn't run into anyone. I would just read my book and it was way more fun than just walking with your mom at Home Depot when you don't really care about home improvements because you're like 14, <laughs> you know? Actually, I might've been 13, I don't know. This is a very tangent driven video, but still all bookish. So I'm on message somewhere. So I'm enjoying Gardens of Moon is kind of my, you should go on a walk and then you can read your book this way sort of read. My audiobook for my car rides has been Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. And I did not know he was going to drop the Kickstarter stuff um, when I was doing this, but it made it really hard to just not buy it because I'm reminded in real time, yeah, this is one of my favorite books ever. Like there's not a moment where I'm like annoyed that I'm listening to the book. Um, I'm having a really good time with it. I've cleaned my whole kitchen today because I just wanted to listen to it for a while because it would just be easy and I like it. And it's it's just one of my favorite books. I just really like it. So Words of Radiance has been my audiobook, just because it's what I have. Um, I don't own the audiobook, so I'm trying to listen to it before the hold is up. We'll see if that actually happens. So I'll probably get it done with a fair bit of time before the live show goes up, which is good, because I should take a break before Oathbringer, because Oathbringer's going to take some energy, if I'm remembering correctly. Although the audiobook reread has been going really well for me. I love all the little things I'm noticing, just even in like terminology that has always been there, but I didn't know was important. And now I know like the definitions or like the things because I read Rhythm of War. And it's just ah, so good. So that's my audiobook for like the car or when I'm like cleaning and doing stuff around the house. Um, my physical read right now is the one you saw on the thumbnail. And that is To Like the Lightning. I don't want to just keep holding it. So I'll put a picture up. So this 
this is great guys like right now I'm a little slumpy with it I'm not gonna lie just because like I'm tired today <laughs> and it's just really hard for me to focus on anything um so I'm hoping my brain wakes up eventually because I really 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 like this book to the point where I've already bought the other books in the series they're not here yet so I can't like wave them at you but I bought the entire quartet um, I don't really know what I expected from these books because they're not talked about a lot. I just know that there was a year for the Hugos where it was nominated for best series and people brought it up and brought up that it was like not always well received and it was a little weird and like instantly my ears go weird, convoluted, maybe complex. I should try it. <laughs> but I, I just truly don't think I was at all prepared for what this was and for how much I've been loving exploring it. Um, I talk about this a lot in other videos, but sometimes I'm a very world driven reader. So like, and what I mean by that is like, normally I need, I, I like caring about characters and their arcs and their stories and their trials and how they push through. Like that's a normal thing for readers to like. Um, plot is less so for me. I am not someone who for years has really been interested in just a plot. I don't know when that changed, but um, a really good plot for me, I would rather have in a movie or a TV show. In a book, obviously it should have a good plot, but if that's like the only thing you're bringing to the table for me, it's not gonna go well. World building? Oh, like, I feel like a kid who's like playing Zelda for the first time, I don't play Zelda, but this is how I feel like people playing Zelda, like, well, what's the newest one that came out? Tears of the Kingdom. This is how I feel like they talk about it. It's like, I just want to look at all the things and I'm so excited and I'm so like immersed in what's going on and I'm definitely getting that from this book. Like I'm just thrown into this far future human world, new governments, new ideas about gender and religion and I'm just getting to learn about it and it's so freaking cool and there's just enough like political intrigue and drama to make me go, yeah, what is gonna happen next? Um, and that might be part of the lull right now is we've gotten a little bit away from the intrigue, although we are learning some interesting world building stuff. Now the thing that makes this book really easy to recommend or not recommend is, you know, find a sample, read the first two to three chapters. You will probably know fairly quickly if you're going to get on with the writing style of this book. Um, it's being, it's, it's a very fourth wall breaking um, narrative framework style. We have this conscripted character, Mycroft, who is writing this story and he is choosing to write it in a style indicative of the Enlightenment period like that we know of from the 1700s, which I'm not actually sure if it really comes across that way because I feel like I don't like literature from the 1700s, but I'm really vibing with this, but like, who knows? Regardless, it's a very voicey narration. <laughs> it breaks the fourth wall sometimes. And if you don't like Mycroft's internal headspace, you're probably not going to like the story. So because of the writing style being such a distinctive feature, I think you can tell really early on if you're going to bounce off of it. Um, luckily, so far, most of us, it's, it seems to be either it works for me or it doesn't work for me. I, I There are a couple people who push through, even though they might not like it completely in the Discord. But for the most part, I'm seeing a lot of love this oh my god and then a lot of i'm bouncing off of this this is not for me so it seems like it's at least very easy to decide pretty early on if you're here for this project it's also fairly philosophical um it works for me and i don't always like philosophical things but especially with this world's relationship to religion and to politics and we're on the cusp of a big change it's just so interesting and i'm really vibing with it so I'm excited to try to find brain cells and energy to finish it later. <laughs> it has not been forthcoming. Um, just because, like I said, I've just been tired. I had insomnia earlier this week, so I'm, you know, still in a sleep deficit. Deficit? Deficit. Deficit. <laughs> yeah, a little chaotic. But um, and I'm like kind of bummed because I'm about to go on my trip. I mean, when you're seeing this, I'm already on my trip. And I'm probably coming home, actually. But regardless, I won't have my physical copies yet because they're still in the mail. And they're not here. So once I finish this, I can't even pick up the second book because I don't have it. Now I have other things to read, as we've already talked about, Gardens of the Moon, Words of Radiance. And then what is my Kindle book? Because um, if you don't know, I usually have a book that I read at night before bed. And it's I, I do not read physical books before bed. My wrists don't like it, especially when it's colder out. Like it's getting warmer, but when it's colder out, it's like I want to be in the blankets and I want to just have my little fingers out of the blankets and then I can just flip the page either with a button or my finger, right? Like that's kind of what I'm going for. And so I decided to start a Tea King Fisher because of course I did. And I'm reading The Clockwork Boys. Is that the name of the first book? I'm pretty sure it is. And this is very fun. It is very fun. I, I really wish earlier in the week I have more like brain space to sink into it because if like 
this was a book I started on like a Friday, I would have had it finished within 48 hours because I would have just been like, yeah, let's just read this book. But it kind of has this stutter start because of like just life and things like that. But I, I do love an impossible trial. And that's what we have here. We have an impossible trial that our female character Slate is bringing a group of people together to try and accomplish, but she's fairly convinced it's a suicide mission and they will fail. Um, and there are reasons why they have to do the job. And then one of the characters that she finds to bring in is a disgraced paladin who got dispossessed by a demon. And it's pretty apparent this is probably a romantic pairing and I like that. And I like how they're getting to know each other, but I'm pretty early days, like especially for a T. King Fisher book, like they're short books to begin with and I'm 30% of the way through, but that just means that I'm like 60 pages in. So I'm curious about the thing that they have to do. Like I don't have a lot of context for it other than it's impossible, they're gonna die. Um, but I also just, I love a good T. King Fisher opening. Like I think this one opens with Slate commenting on like the smell of rosemary. Like, of course, T. Kingfisher, of course. And don't worry, as soon as I have access to the sequel, when I finish this, I will continue because I know it's basically one book split in two based off of a bunch of reviews from people I know who've read it. So that's something that I'm also reading. So those are my currently reading right now. And I just got access today to the audiobook for The Tainted Cup. So I believe once I finish one of these things, so either To Like the Lightning or Clockwork Boys, I'll pick that up and immersion read it because I've been really excited to read Robert Jackson Bennett and I think that'll be a great read to have on my vacation. Um, what are some other things I have laying around? I might start The Broken Kingdoms because I know we said we'd start that near the middle of the month and like it's already near the middle of the month. So I guess that's an option. <laughs> and you know, I mean, it's gonna take me forever to finish Gardens and Moon. So that's gonna kind of keep on going. But yeah, I'm just really loving this guys. Like I'm really enjoying this book. <laughs> And I totally get why it doesn't work for some people. Um, but it's just, it's just so, it's so awesome. I think the only thing it's missing for me is that I'm so immersed in this cool world and just like this cool commitment to this project, this art idea, this, the thought experiment of what we're doing that I just wish I had a few characters that I was like legit super close to and rooting for. Like I don't quite have this. This is very much a world and ideas driven sci-fi, but I haven't had a science fiction book that's made me go like, ooh, this world, ah, all the things in so long. So I think I'm also just very captivated by that. So I think like that's like the one thing that would make this just like, oh my goodness, the perfect book. <laughs> like it's still really good and there's no such thing as the perfect book. So let's not strive for that anyways. But you know, if you've been curious about this book, like I said, try out, a, try out a couple sample chapters, you know, could be fun. And I love these covers and like their coloring. This is Chile, by the way, if you were, if you were curious. Anyways, um, that's this brief update. And I will let you know next week how I feel about whatever things I finished and what I've continued with. Let me know what you're reading, doing, watching this weekend or upcoming week. And otherwise, if you just want to leave an emoji to let me know you're here, I already said lightning in a different video. Um, so let us do, oh, let's do a moon for Gardens of the Moon. That's what I got. <laughs> and otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.